Hello everyone. Well, I've wanted one of these for my collection for quite some time, an Electrolux 504. Now, a lot of the uh, cleaners on eBay are sold as collection only, so I don't bother with them. This one, the seller actually put postage. But after I won the auction, I contacted the seller after paying and asked nicely if they would ensure that the cleaner was packed in some strong packaging with internal packaging to stop it moving about in transit. And um, the seller came back to me a bit later on and said, can't you collect it? So I said, no, I don't drive. The reason I bid on your item was you offered postage. So anyway, it has turned up in this packaging, a few boxes taped together. I don't have much hope that this will be in one piece, but <laughs> well, if it isn't, I'm afraid I will be getting my money back. I don't normally ask sellers to pack stuff properly. I expect them to do it, but mm. well, this is what we have. We have some spare bags, a couple of boxes. I don't know if they're both full. One is certainly one full box of genuine Electrolux bags. One, two, and four. So nine bags. We also have a toolkit. But this toolkit is too new. It will fit this cleaner, but it is a bit new for it because the original, I don't even, I think it is, a, I think it's genuine Electrolux. Um, the original toolkit for this particular model would have um, had a metal, metal handle, a metal wand, um, carpet floor nozzle, butterfly tool, and crevice nozzle. It would have been a braided cloth hose as well, which obviously, as we know, they can leak air after a while. So it's not the correct, but I do, fortunately, a while back, I did buy a toolkit that is more to the vintage of this cleaner. Even before I got one of these, I thought, well, I saw the toolkit and thought I'll get it just in case I get the cleaner for it. But I do have other Electrolux twin turbos that would fit these tools anyway. Two tubes, don't really look very used at all. Two wands. There's a spare pre-motor filter. There are two filters under the dust bag and that's the second one that's normally screwed down. So that's good, a nice spare. Ooh, also, I've got a spare belt as well, which is good. Quite a few as well, this <laughs> few spare filters as you know, the top filter, slightly different. These ones have got the little pocket in for the Electrolux air freshener to go into. And these are the, I oh know they're all, they're all like that. These actually say top, top front on them. And then we've got the butterfly tool and the crevice tool. Okay, well, the cleaner has been wrapped in bubble wrap, hasn't it? Surprisingly light. Saying that though, they're pretty strong. I did have an Electrolux. Oh no, actually, no, it did arrive broken. I got an Electrolux 560 and that was sent basically just like this though, it didn't even have a box and that was smashed to pieces. This looked in very good condition on the listing. Now I've wanted one of these because it is um, a sort of a family vacuum I remember playing with. It actually belonged to my mother's mum and dad, my, my grandma and granddad. I remember, I think I was 
I think I was staying at my uh, grandma's and granddad's when my granddad bought this home. And previously, my grandma had had a Hoover Junior. And it was the Hoover Junior with the brown bag and the pumpkin colored front. And she also had a dustette. So when my granddad came back with this, Electrolux 504, my grandma wasn't very happy because to my grandma, this was too fancy. She didn't want anything, you know, with all these features. She was happy with the Hoover Junior type cleaner. So this, to my grandma, it looks okay so far. This to my grandma was state of the art for, for back then, late, late 70s, I think it would have been. So far, so good. Such a retro looking vacuum. It's gonna clean up very well. As long as the handle isn't broken. Lovely. I think this is gonna be okay. Yes, yeah, so I believe on the 560 I got, it was completely broken here, the handle. But then again, the seller just wrapped it in a bit of bubble wrap and, and bin bags. So I think if this works, I'm gonna be very pleased to get one of these. They do turn up on eBay fairly frequently, but a lot of the time they're collection only and sometimes they are in very bad condition. This one did seem from the pictures to be in very good condition and so far, fingers crossed, it looks like it survived in one piece. So I'm gonna clear away all this packaging. We'll have a closer look at this lovely Electrolux 504. Well, folks, I think the vacuum gods have smiled on me today because not only is this Electrolux 504 in one piece, it is in near mint condition well it is now because i've spent 20 minutes giving it a bit of a clean but not much of a clean um, i used some wet wipes initially then brasso don't use brasso on all plastics um, test a little part of the plastic first but brasso yes the metal polish is excellent on plastic don't go over any printed um, decals or anything because it might take it off after that, I, I washed it again, and then a final polish with the Vuplex polish to reveal an absolutely near mint vacuum cleaner. I cannot believe how good this is. There's no deep scratches on this machine. There's just a tiny couple of nicks, but you'd hardly notice them. I'm absolutely thrilled with it. I haven't even switched it on, even if it doesn't work. I'll be able to get it working. Um, I've even seen brand new motors for the Electrolux 500 series. Still available. But that is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And it's, as I said, it's it was on my wish list. The only other cleaner similar to this on my wish list is the more basic Electrolux 502 in the avocado green i think it was classed as avocado green and dark brown trim i'm not sure what they this may they may have called this sunburst yellow or canary yellow but absolutely filled i haven't even looked underneath yet i've not cleaned underneath but just look at it i mean it's fantastic and i didn't pay a lot of money for this it was under 50 pounds i paid for this the pictures weren't very good, but the pictures I looked at, it did look in pretty good condition, especially the underneath, underside. That's where you can often tell how much vacuum wear, how much use the vacuum's had by looking underneath, looking at the wheels, see how worn they are. But I didn't think it would turn up this well. This is fantastic. If I was to sell this on eBay now, polished up like this with lots of nice, proper sharp photos i would not be surprised if this went up to well more than 200 maybe even 300 i don't know i don't know what demand there are for these they're not that rare but again they're not that common but i think in this this condition i think it's pretty rare so let's have a closer look i think we'll start off with the area i've not looked at in detail yet and that's the underside of the vacuum 
Well, here is the underside of the cleaner in its uncleaned state. This is the first time I'm seeing it. There's a bit of fluff here, look. Bit of fluff. But, <laughs> wow. I mean, the wheels. Look at the wheels, folks. Oh, I know, it's silly, isn't it? I'm getting all excited <laughs> over a vacuum cleaner. But the wheels, the front wheels especially, they're hardly worn at all which means that this vacuum has not had very much mileage at all. The back wheels, almost as good as well. I'll have to check, but this internal hose here can sometimes split. You can still buy replacements in black. Um, I used to take my mum's 502 apart. I'm very familiar with this cleaner. I'm sure I used to service this machine when, my, uh, when I stopped at my uh, grandma's and granddad's house in Leeds. But even the metal strip here, look, with the side suction channels, that is so smooth and new looking. Bit mucky here, look. <laughs> and it might, ah! Oh! It's the beta bar version as well. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Because sometimes these came with two sets of brushes. You get four brushes, one, two long sets and two short sets. But as you can see, this one, and this is the same as my mum's 502, that had the beta bars. But you can, if you wanted, you can slip those beta bars out and put in four brushes, you know, another set of brushes if you want to do that, depending on your carpet. Now that doesn't feel quite right so I think it will need a new belt. It is a bit, yeah, bits of fluff. So I'll pop a new belt in, vac out any fluff, have a another look at the rest of this cleaner and then hopefully she'll uh, switch on. I can't see any reason why this vacuum won't work as well as it looks. Just two screws to undo to get access to the belt. There you go, you can see what I'm doing now. And of course, this is a, a British made vacuum. This would have been made in Luton, Bedfordshire, in the Electrolux factory. This will just pull off now, I think, yes. It's gonna be some muck. Oh, come on, that shouldn't come out with that. Oh dear, that shouldn't happen. Anyway, ooh, quite a bit of, <laughs> You wouldn't have thought that, would you? To see how clean this cleaner was on the outside, even before I uh, gave it a bit of a polish. So I will, yes, it's probably best that I didn't switch it on until <laughs> I cleaned all this out. So the belt is absolutely caked in fluff. I don't know how the fluff can actually get round there doesn't seem to be blocked in any way. It's absolutely, it's carpet fluff from a new carpet by the looks. These have always been a little bit tricky. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing, hang on. That's a bit better. Now I need to slide off, slide off the old uh, belt. Yeah, definitely needs replacing, but there was a spare belt, but I do have some spares as well. But apart from this, that doesn't even need wiping, that just needs a good vacuuming. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of fluff inside here. I don't know if you can quite see it. So I will just go and get a, another vacuum. I just don't know why though. Mm. This part of the brush roll shouldn't really stay in there. I think I have, yes I have got another brush, brush roller. Oh there we go, it's just come away. Right. You can also remove the base plate. There's a little clip here. You sometimes need to undo the screw, but I think it'll be, I can just move it across. And then, with a bit of jiggering, jiggery pokery, that should, there we are, that comes out. So that's the base plate. That just needs a bit of a wipe. It's not even gonna need soaking. I don't want to soak it because all these seals around here, are in perfect condition, just a wet wipe around this and just remove that little black black mark 
which will come off. Can't see any blockage. So I'll just uh, vacuum out all of this. Yeah, that, that'll do for now. So obviously I will give this a bit more of a clean properly. Um, these are quite mucky here. I better use the old, uh, the old Dyson again. Now, I wasn't going to actually film this, but I thought uh, I'd show you the amount of dust that was inside here. I mean, this is going to need a bit more of a clean. I mean, it's still giving up loads and loads of dust from that. I mean, it's amazing. Quite surprising considering how clean the machine is. And look, even inside the, the beta bar. It's got all the fluff is in there. I wonder if the Dyson will get that out in the gap. <laughs> Nearly. There we go. Might need a boost actually. Let's boost it. Might be a bit noisier. Now I think that's going to need a bit of a, a screwdriver to help get the rest of that out. Absolutely. <laughs> right, I've got my wet wipes. They're so useful, these surface wipes, for a quick clean up. I also use them obviously when I've got a, a new vacuum. If I want to keep it looking new, I'd use these surface wipes. This is going to need a proper Proper clean. I still, still got stuff in it. <laughs> wow. Going to give it a little bit of oil as well on the spindles and the bearings. But there's no rust. Sometimes it's got a metal spindle all the way through this. Sometimes they, when you open them up, they can be rusty. But this one doesn't seem well. All the dust on it has probably protected it quite a lot. Oh, I'm dropping my here. Uh, Dropping my surface wipe into the muck, that won't help, will it? So anyway, I won't film the rest of this, but basically you can see what I'm doing. Just cleaning out this. I'm going to fit a new belt. Pop the brushes and beta bars back in. Pop the base plate back on and uh, we'll have a, a look at the other features of this cleaner before we switch it on. So if this works as good as it looks, I am going to be one very happy bunny. <laughs> Okie dokie, right. I've more or less given it a full refurb. Um, basically, I've just wiped it around with some multi-surface wipes. The uh, belt is fitted, new belt, and I've again just wiped around a bit of oil on the spindle and uh, the bearings. I'm not so sure, they don't seem quite as smooth as they should be. We'll soon find out though. The motor spindle seems to turn very well. I've cleaned up the base. The base now looks brand new almost look at it i mean it's fantastic look at it 
Look at it, folks. Got that little black mark off. Final polish with the Vuplex to give it a nice sheen and a little layer of protection, hopefully. So we'll just pop the base plate back on. First of all, we've got to, of course, reconnect the internal hose. Well, it would be such a disappointment if this either doesn't work or blows up because it does have a suppressor in and I'm a bit wary of Electrolux cleaners and their suppressors. I've had them blow up on me before. I believe the suppressor in this one is somewhere in the motor. It's not in the handle, I think. So if it does blow up, at least it shouldn't uh, give me such a, a nasty shock. Not electrical shock, it was a, yes, it was a little bit nasty. Anyway, so there we go. Let's make sure that that's seated properly. Oh, that is turning okay. And there's one of the screws. Oh, it's such a well-made vacuum, this. I mean, you do not, and I know I go on and on about it when I'm opening older vacuums, but you do not get the quality, really, the majority of manufacturers produce cleaners to sell cheaply. And it shows, even some expensive cleaners though, aren't up to the quality of this. I think a cleaner of this quality would be many hundreds of pounds if it was to be sold this day and age. What I used to do, I don't know if it upset uh, the balance of the machine. In order to give it a sort of beats as it sweeps, as it cleans action, what I used to do with my mum's 502 that had the beta bar, I used to swap the small beta there for the brush. That's what I used to do. <laughs> so it, I sort of thought it sort of beats as it sweeps as it cleans. I don't know what Electrolux called this cleaning action. I'm sure they did call it something, might have just called it beat and sweep or, but as I said, not all of them had the beta bar. Most of them, and I think my uh, grandparents one did just have the four, four brushes. So this should have a bit of a beating growl to it. Right, that's all fine and dandy. Let's have a look at the rest of the cleaner and then switch her on. The main differences between the Electrolux 502 and the more deluxe 504 were two features. Although the 502 did have a suction control, it was located on the back of the machine where you insert the tool kit. On the 504, we've got a minimum and maximum slider, so you can reduce the suction at the cleaner head just by sliding that. And it also had an additional, well has, an additional height control. So with the 502, the head was just floating all the time. On the 504, you had this lever so you could adjust it for higher pile carpet or shag carpeting, which would have been popular when this machine was in the shop. So it would have had higher pile carpets. And for those high piles, you would put that. So then the head is fixed. When the machine's in the upright position, the brushes are raised up. But when you recline it, they lower down. But on the high pile setting, they're slightly higher until you move the lever. So when the lever's in the forward position, then it acts just like the 502 with a floating head. This is the foot pedal that you press to recline the handle to the operating position. And then if you want to clean under low furniture, you could press on the pedal again if you could reach it. But normally, I think what the instructions said was to just give the handle a slight jerk and it will lower. We've got the rating sticker here or the rating plate in the case of the Electrolux made of metal. So we'll have a closer look at that in a minute. And just above the pedal, we've got the cover for the tool socket where you plug the hose in. With the Electrolux 502, that had a little dial to reduce the suction at the head. And always you had to make sure that this cover was in place when you used it in upright mode. Otherwise, obviously it's gonna lose suction through this hole here. So if we plug in the hose, whoops-a-daisy. Obviously it's not really the correct 
vintage of hose for this machine, but it, it fits just the same. Much easier to connect the tools to the Electrolux uprights than it was to the Hoover ones of the time, apart from the Hoover convertible, which had a socket at the back, very similar sort of thing to this, but higher up. Most of the other Hoovers had either a pan converter that fitted over the agitator, or in the case of the older juniors, you had you had to remove the front cover. So the Electrolux used to be called the twin, twin 502 or twin 504, twin meaning it was upright and cylinder. And on the whole, from memory, the Electrolux uprights had more suction using the tools than the Hoovers did. So it's just a much simpler way of attaching very ingenious and of course because it's low down you could pull the cleaner along behind you and it wouldn't topple over absolutely whoever designed the 500 series i don't know who it was but they did a very good job you can see how it's shaped that's so it diverts the suction from the cleaner head through the hose it's absolutely simple but brilliant in my book so here's the rating plate, a bit hard to see. It's model Z504, product number 905901, serial 918. It's double insulated, it's 450 watts, 240 volts, 50 hertz. Further up the back of the bag compartment, we have this grill here that vents out the exhaust air. And just above that we have the combined carry handle and lower cord hook. The upper cord hook can be rotated so you can remove the cable in one go. At the top of the bag housing we've got the adjustable control for the whistling air freshener. It wasn't really of a whistle, more of a sort of a, a deeper tone. We'll try and make it whistle during the course of this demo. And you could adjust it for sensitivity, so I can't recall which which is the most sensitive position. I think it's position one, it would trigger sooner than the position zero, which I think means the whistle signal is off. But I think the recommendation was to have it set around three. With the Electrolux 560 that you may have seen on my channel, this whistle signal control has been replaced by the electronic dial to adjust the motor speed. Another feature that the Electrolux 504 had that the 502 didn't is a mains on indicator light located in the thumb operated switch here. So when you plug the machine into the wall, this light illuminates just to alert you that it's plugged in and that there's mains running to the machine. When you actually turn the machine on though, the light goes out. But then again, you don't really need a mains on light, do you, when you're using the machine because you should know that it's running. So we'll have to see if that feature still works when I plug this old girl in. So all we have to do now is to have a look at the bag and filters, which are located obviously inside here. We've got a nice metal on this one. They cheapened it to plastic in later models, but on this one, we've got the metal catch. So you open the catch and ingeniously, the whole handle folds down and here's the bag. The bag just lifts out and the original bags for these cleaners would have been a yellow colour and they would have had a red clip at the bottom so you could reuse them. So that's something that's missing. The only fault so far I've found with this cleaner, you can still buy those red clips if I can get hold of the original yellow bags. So I'll put a new bag in. This often perishes, it might, yes, might need replacing if I can get hold of one. That's just a little foam spongy seal to help seal the top of the dust bag. And they've also got a little seal around here. And inside, it's all very, very clean. I'll give it a bit of a, a wipe. There we go. People who've watched my channel for a long time will know I've had vacuum cleaners delivered in many, many different states of repair and mess. This one is extremely clean, isn't it, compared to some. I'll pop a new filter in, actually. Looks quite thin. So that's your uh, first pre-motor filter. And then the other one, secured by the screw. I don't know if we can quite see it in there. 
that's the filter I showed you earlier. I'm not going to put another one of those in, but I will pop a new one of these in and a new dust bag. So in goes the new filter, helpfully telling me that that's the top and that's the front. There's no other way you can put it in really, but the way it's uh, shaped to fit the cavity of the dust bag compartment. Then we've got the dust bag, quite large capacity these. I think they did sort of drop off a bit in suction as they filled. That'll slot in there. Let's make sure it's seated properly. It's always a little bit tricky to get them in. I think these are slightly, could be slightly bigger than the originals actually. I'm going to have to go on eBay and see if I can get some proper original ones. There we go, that's in. It'll close okay when I fasten the clip. Not a hugely long cable on cleaners of this era. For some reason, the manufacturers didn't seem to think people wanted long cables. We were always having to unplug and replug. Normally, one cable would be enough to do a room, and then you'd have to unplug it and plug it into the hall. <laughs> and that's what we had to put up with back in the day. Before the cordless cleaners, of course, this has got a lovely MK. For those that know, MK made very good plugs and other electrical equipment. They did everything, you know, the sockets. I think they're still going as a company, but possibly not made in the UK. I don't know if this is age appropriate because this has got the insulated pins. I'm not sure when those came in, an extra safety feature, but I'll leave it on because they are good plugs. I'm gonna trust that it's wired up correctly. <laughs> right, I don't know which position the switch should be on, but I'm gonna plug it in. Switch it on at the socket. It's either going to turn on or hopefully the neon light will illuminate. Okay, so we know that mains power is getting to the cleaner because the light came on. So I've turned it off again at the socket. I'm going to switch it on at the cleaner and turn it on at the socket a little bit further away. Fingers crossed, folks. Well, nothing wrong with that. You can hear the beta bars on this model, can't you? Well, <laughs> I'm so pleased with this, unbelievably pleased. Let's hope it doesn't blow up before the end of the video. Okay, I think it's safe to switch it on and give it a bit of a push around. <laughs> She's sounding a bit rough, so I'm gonna to have to look at the agitator. That's what the problem is. I don't know if it's because of the beta bars causing that extra noise. I'll try it with four brushes at some point, but I might need to tweak, tweak the agitator the way I put it in. Um, I might need to just sort of realign it because I think the motor sounds fine because when it's in upright position without the brush roll touching the carpet, the motor sounds okay. <laughs> Just going to feel the suction through the hose. Just first time, I'm just going to test the suction at the cleaner end. I used to do this as a kid for some reason. It does look a bit rude. It's all in the interest of science doing that. There's certainly no blockages. If there is any blockages, it's easy to clear a blockage in this air path because you just open the bag door the top of the bag door and then you'd poke a blunt instrument that's how you used to do it and any debris would end up coming out of here that's the theory anyway there we go it 
it's not great i'm not gonna lie it's not great suction like you'd expect with a cylinder cleaner but for an upright it's more than adequate for doing your upholstery and your curtains your stairs of course though it won't reach up standard flight of stairs the older uh, cloth covered hose might have been slightly longer but still nowhere near long enough to get up the stairs but you could i suppose carry the machine with one hand it's not heavy while you're directing the nozzle when you've put the nozzle on the end but yeah it's a very good system with the tools because as you can see it just follows you around it will not topple over well it might if you're very violent with it but in general it will just follow you around as you're cleaning your upholstery or dusting all your knickknacks so there you go that's the end of today's video of this electrolux 504 i'm absolutely thrilled with this cleaner the condition i'm absolutely astounded by it especially after I gave it a little bit of a clean and a polish. It really is a fantastic cleaner. Well, that's another vacuum cleaner I've wanted for another long time. I've waited quite a while to get one of these, but I think it was worth the wait to get one in such absolutely fantastic condition as this one. I'm so pleased and it didn't cost me an arm and a leg. If you have any comments or questions about this Electrolux 504, please comment below. And I'll see you all very soon for another video. This will be demonstrated at some point once I've sorted out that brush roll. Until then, it's goodbye. See you soon.